Hello, we are into the uh, inception lecture series of Metropolitan Discipline and today we are going to deal with scales and divergences. Um, the metropolis is in a scale which is halfway between the urban dimension and the national dimension. As we saw in one of the first uh, presentations, uh, we have different scales from the uh, architectural design, which is 150 urban design, which is 1,500 ur uh, urban planning, 1,500 metropolitan planning, 150,000 national planning, 1,500,000. Uh, uh, um, uh, a continent is one uh, five million, and the world is one fifty million. And the client that needs that kind of planning is different in every case, and the disciplines that are involved in that kind of decision making and planning are different. From a single family that uh, commissions uh, the the single family, uh, the, the 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 house or an institution that uh, commissions a building. You go into the uh, community that requires some public spaces, you go into the uh, city hall, uh, the urban planning, and then you go on and on, and you go into governments, and then into uh, coordination, uh, confederacies of governments, and then into the world, which is obviously uh, macroeconomics and uh, geopolitics and so on. The disciplines are, are different in any case. And the metropolitan discipline is in between national planning and urban planning, but is more like uh, national planning, as we have seen, because of the importance of uh, the um, metropolis in economic terms around the world. Metropolis are as, 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 as powerful in economic terms as nations, and many, uh, many are much more powerful than, than many nations. So we have to deal with it, n realizing that, that interaction at a national level, uh, more like an urban level. But we have, when we are dealing with uh, metropolitan decision making, we must realize that those all, all those scales have to dialogue. You cannot take a decision on a house if you don't take care about the, 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 the street it's in. You have to design the house in accordance with the street. You have to, uh, to design the street in accordance with the area of the, uh, of the urban plan it's in, and so on and so on. So, it, it is a, a continuous of scales that you have to dialogue. So the metropolitan scale has to dialogue with the national scale, has to dialogue with the urban plan. And that is the same thing that happens in the uh, um, elements, the, the sectors of the metropolis. When you are dealing with transport, you have to deal with international uh, transport uh, means, modes like the airplane, uh, and then integrate that with the national transports uh, of the trains and the highways, and then with the the regional one of the commuter trains and then with the urban one with the metro and then the, the, uh, the, the uh, more community uh, urban design, the, the bus and the pedestrian and, and, the, and the bike. You know? So really you have to have an integrated system and, and the main focus of the metropolis is that integration of the different scales of the system. That works in transport but it works as well in environment. You ha must have a continuous system, we, s we saw for bio biodiversity's sake, for the flows of biodiversity among the different natural systems. You must have the, the system that flows up from uh, the national parts up to the smallest uh, possible uh, urban garden. And when you are planning the metropolis, you must uh, design for that flow. So, size matters. You don't design a metropolis as you design a city. You have to understand that even if a worm or a snake have similar shapes, because they are elongated and so on, if you have 10 centimeters or one meter, is a different DNA, and you will have to deal with the snake in a different way you deal with the worm. And if you try to deal with the snake the way you deal with a worm, you're in trouble. So you must realize we are shape, ma uh, size matters. We are with different DNAs and we have to deal with it in a completely different way we deal with cities. And that's one of the problems uh, metropolitan planners have. They think a metropolis is just a large city. It's not. It's a completely different DNA. And we saw how those DNAs are so powerful around the world that many of those metropolises are comparable to national systems rather than to uh, urban systems. Then we have a difficulty. When you have a nation like the Philippines, 
where Manila is 66% of the national GDP, or Argentina, where some say that uh, Buenos Aires goes as high as 80% of the GDP of Buenos Aires, or uh, Cairo, which is 60% of the GDP of, of, of Egypt, a national government doesn't like to have a metropolitan mayor that will control, that will be responsible for 70% of the GDP of the nation. He's the president of the nation. He doesn't want to have someone controlling 70% of the GDP or the population of the nation. So we have three types of nations and metropolitan situations within nation states and nation structures. We have those metropolises which are 60% in the range of 60% of the national GDP. We have those nations where the main metropolis is 25-30% of the national GDP. That's the case of London, that's the case of Paris. Uh, Madrid and Barcelona as well is 30% uh, uh, of the Spanish uh, uh, GDP. And then you have those uh, nations where the main metropolis are only around 5% of the GDP of the nation. That's the case of uh, Germany. Uh, Frankfurt is 6%, I think. Uh, that's the case of Italy, uh, Rome, Milan. Uh, uh, and that's the case of China as well. So it depends on what kind of nation, if you are in the 60% uh, bracket, if you are in the 30% bracket or the 5% bracket, probably the national government will have a different political attitude to the way those metropolis have to be managed. The lower, in the 5% uh, bracket, the national government doesn't really, uh, is not afraid of a management of the metropolis with a lot of political power. And that's why in Germany the federal system allows Berlin, Bremen and Hamburg to have their own metropolitan uh, governance and metropolitan system. In those countries where the metropolis is almost 70% or 60, uh, in that range, the national government will not like it. So we have to to, to be aware of that, to understand what kind of uh, governance mechanism will be better for a metropolis depending on the national situation and the national uh, bracket. We um, can have, we must understand that whatever one of these mechanisms we decide for, which can be confederate, uh, unitary or uh, federal, uh, that the way we handle the metropolis has to be completely different from the way we handle the urban systems. A metropolis, an, an urban system, is the mayor, the departments, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the population, and you have a dialogue, the governance dialogue, is a top-down, bottom-up dialogue, which is one of the issues that we generally deal with when we are doing urban planning, how you present the plans, the projects, uh, and how the population reacts, or how the, the population has initiatives, and then the, uh, the, uh, the uh, urban, the, uh, the city government takes those initiatives on board, and how is that dialogue. When we are dealing with a metropolis, it's not at all like that. Every one of the uh, uh, institutions that are involved in taking decisions at metropolitan level, every one of them, has their own competences. Competences In a democratic system, uh, the power is spread around and every institution has specific uh, competences given by the law. And you cannot say to someone else what he should do that you will, well, you can say him, uh, it, uh, I would like you to do this because it fits what I am looking for, but you cannot impose that on them. So it has to be a dialogue between all those institutions in a more of a matrix system where you have all the institutions talking to all the institutions and obviously this dialogue has to be as transparent and as open as possible so everyone knows what the others are doing and you, kind of, uh, you find a kind of uh, framework of collective intelligence uh, that we saw in the social component of agreeing and doing things that will uh, have a multiplier effect and, and a good social resource impact one in, in the other. So we are in a completely different framework of decision making in a city and a metropolis. And as you see, this metropolitan approach looks much more like the uh, national way of managing a, a country where you have those institutions and they have to have a permanent dialogue among them to reach 
the, the best solution possible. So, as we saw, we have this strategic component on how to relate all the components of the, of the genoma together, which is more into the strategic approach of dealing with a metropolis that you have to do because you, you must integrate all those elements in the metropolis. And then we go into the more stru structural planning of the metropolis, dealing specifically with those tangible elements of the physical environment and the uh, different elements of that component. You have different techniques and in the uh, future uh, presentations we are going to deal with those uh, specific te techniques. Next time we are going to see how the metro works with uh, some kind of scientific and technical approaches to curves, to, uh, to the phenomena that, uh, that uh, happens in the metropolis. And you can download these presentations from the uh, links which are on this slide. Thank you.